the fight card that we have uh, coming up this weekend is very interesting. Very, very. We got uh, Mateusz Gamrot versus Rafael Fiziev. That's the main event. Cole main will be uh, Bryce Mitchell. Now, in comparison to the last card that we had, the UFC Noche, it's very kind of like similar in the sense that the main event, the fighters are not as popular. Maybe that might be the thing as the guy that's in the co-main event. Or in the UFC Noche, it was the case of the apparently the third fight from the top, which was the uh, Raul Rosa Jr., so Dana Reveal, I mean, if he told this be told me this before, if he didn't read the statistic or if that's true, I'm not sure. But the fact that he says that people tune in to watch him, that he was the biggest star of that card, it's it's quite interesting. Now, people are saying a lot of nasty things about his looks and all that. I, I couldn't own that. It's not nice. Although I'm guilty myself, I did laugh a lot of the memes. And big shout out to UFC shit posting on Facebook. There's a couple of groups that it's called the UFC shit posting on Facebook I'm a part of. And... Yes, I'm guilty of that. I do laugh at the memes, and especially the one where he's, they say, 50 cheese. Yeah, that, that, was, that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> hey, anybody part of that group, trust me, is going to go to hell. So, you know, we're all sinners. Some more, some less. But anyways, to my point. So he, he, Dana White said he was the biggest... <laughs> sorry. He was the biggest star of that card. Very interesting. A kid that's 18 years old... He's still, you know, climbing the ranks. He lost once. Now he got a very, a very good victory. He knocked out Terrence Mitchell. He was, he was the winner of that fight, and you know, he brought the most attention supposedly, uh, more than Valentina Alexander Grasso, the champion, the Mexican champion. Right? Very, very interesting. That's the truth. Now, okay. Anyways, that happened last weekend. Now coming up here, we have Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell on his own came out. And he said, I am the UFC's cash cow, or the future cash cow. I'll be the one. I'm the star. So he, he's coming into this. I like his attitude. He's more confident. He's more mature. Um, you know, he, he looks like he's in a better spot than he was before. I, I felt like Ilya Teporia beat him so badly that he ruined him. <laughs> so that, but then I, re I realized, you know, Bryce Mitchell was saying stuff, weird stuff, even before Ilya Tapuria. So it wasn't really Ilya Tapuria. But, you know, listen, make no mistake about it. I like Bryce Mitchell. You know, he's a very likable guy. He, you know, he lives the fight. He's a farm boy from Arkansas, lives the farm life. He's different from most other fighters. There's mostly city kids that became fighters. But this guy's an actual farm boy and he loves his animals. He loves his fruit trees and he's a very basic doodle, he's a very basic life and that's unique in today's modern world, right? But he also said some pretty weird things, yeah. And most importantly, he says the earth is flat, which I think he's a complete moron for saying that. And I'm sorry if I fed you, but I'm not sorry. If you really think the earth is flat, you're a complete moron. That's elementary school stuff, so yes, I'm not gonna... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go without saying that. Yeah, he is a tool. He's a freaking moron for saying something like that. But other than that, I still like the guy. You know, I can't just, you know, treat him seriously. Sure, we can always debate about religion, about politics. But yeah, we cannot debate about the earth being flat. You're just, if you believe the earth is flat, you're a complete moron. There, I said it. But anyhow... Like I said, I still like the guy. I think he's a terrific fighter. I think he just came across. And he said he made a couple excuses. Maybe it's true that he was not prepared. He was not supposed to fight. That he was ill or injured or something along the lines. When he entered the fight with Ilya Teporia. That he was compromised. And, but he was still beat badly. I think he just, he just came across a really good, uh, maybe potentially even a future champion, Ilya Teporia. I mean, like, you're not guilty. In my book, you're not guilty. You still can be a future champ yourself. You can be great in your legacy and everything. That one loss won't determine your, your whole career. So I think he still has a pretty good chance. He's got a tough opponent in Dan. We'll see what he does. Now, main event, you can simplify it and say it's striker versus grappler. But I think it's going to be much more than that. And I think it's going to be complete warfare. Um, you know, I, I think that Mateo Skamra, uh, maybe he will show the legendary Polish power in the lightweight. He might throw some... New uh, strikes and, you know, surprise with his striking this time. He said he actually trained way more and he needs to prove his striking abilities. And he's improving more and more, which is impressive to hear, you know, to, to see that will. And he's one of the few guys that got complimented. Very few, if not the only one, that got complimented by the Dagestanis, by, by Khabib and his team and Islam. 
When he fought Darush, if you guys remember, they are the guys that said, like, even though he lost to Darush, they said, like, hey, Mattels is actually the future. He might be the future champion. They recognize his wrestling skills. And that coming from them, I think it's a huge compliment. That speaks levels. You may not be a fan of them, but if they compliment your ability and they said that you might be a future champion, then you're the real deal, and they compliment your wrestling, that says something. There's something there. So even as a 32-year-old, he finds the will to, you know, keep improving. Sure, he only had a couple of losses, but everything else was a, was a win by him, you know, and he's beat some pretty good guys in his career. So now he's got a big challenge. He's got Rafael Fiziev, who's coming out of a loss from Justin Gaethje. Again, not guilty of losing to Justin Gaethje. I mean, he went the full five rounds and lost in a decision. Sure, Justin beat him, beat him badly, but he didn't knock him out. You know, he can still make a really good case. And I'm excited for both guys. I want to see them in that mix in that top five. You know, that adds some fresh blood. And I, I think they stand a pretty good chance versus the the old top guys, you know, in the likes of Darush and Justin and Dustin Poirier. And of course, Islam Makachev, who will be defending the title himself on in October. So, yeah, very interesting weekend. Interesting fight night. Um, you also have that Canadian kid that says he's being compared uh, to, unfairly, the uh, Quebec and Canadian media are comparing him to the expectations of uh, the great George, St. George uh, Pierre. George St. Pierre. So, yeah, I feel that. I, 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 he's a really good fighter. We saw him fight uh, the Gracie guy, right? But, yeah, he showed a lot of skill. He's a really tough guy. And I wish him nothing but the best of luck. And I, I, I wish the Canadian media, especially the French Canadians, are treating him more nicely and... Yeah, it's not fair to put yourself, you know, like imagine if all the American media put every single American fighter in comparison to John Jones. Oh, you're not like John Jones. Sorry, we're not going to cover you as much. We're not going to, you know, be interested in your fights as much. That's not fair. So I think he deserves a chance. Anyhow, let me know what you guys think. Is Bryce Mitchell the future cash cow? Is he the real deal still? And what do you think? Who will win? Who will rise to those top ranks between Rafael Fiziev and Mateusz Gamrat? Let me know. I'll see you the next one.